everybody. Zoom has done something funny today. So I like quite often, as some of you know, to use the um, tick functions in participants. And it used to be until this morning that you could go on to um, go on to participants and tick or cross. But now they've got rid of that. So instead, you have to go on your screen at the bottom to reactions, and then you have to give a reaction that way. See if you can find it. I'm, I'm not going to use it as much, I don't think, because I think it's trickier to find. But if you go on your screen, click on reactions at the button, at the bottom even, and give a reaction. Oh, here you are. Somebody have found it. Lots of different reactions. I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? You get different reactions. Yeah. Open mouth, joy, thumbs up. Cool. Lots of you have found it. And I think that what's new as well is that it disappear, they disappear after a little bit. So I think they're, they're all disappearing. So you get a little bit of time for reaction and then they disappear. So we'll see how they go. But we are um, doing level four synoptic, one of my favorite ones. Um, last week you did, oh, let me zoom in on that. This is what the level four synoptic looks like. And what, we try, what I tried to do over the course of the next few weeks is try to cover off one of each task. Um, we'll have a quick chat in a minute about those tasks, but I know last week you had a look at task number three, weaknesses. So that was, what was last week? 14th it would have been. Yeah. And this week we are having a look at number four, costs and costing techniques. I know sometimes they're not, not so liked. I wanted to ask you, which task do you think you would most like to do for next week? Put it in number, put it in chat in the chat box. Which task are you most after some guidance on? I could have I could have guessed. Okay, that was that was probably what I was thinking we were going to say. Task two. Always task two. Any written one? Okay. Marta says any written one. You might want to have a look at last week's Marta. Um. <clears throat> Okay, Megan. It's a good idea. Exam on the night of the Yeah. So some of you are probably going to have your exam quite soon. Um, two and four. Yeah. So if you look at what I'm trying to do is the last set of videos from last year. I'm doing different things this time. Um, some people are rolling them around, but I'm trying to do different ones every time. <clears throat> so it's worth you taking the time. I think there's eight videos. So that's effectively eight hours worth of work you could do. One from each task. Um, and this time again, I'm trying to do the same. So we've, and Ben did three last week. We're going to do four today with some new material. Two. That's fine. We'll have a look at number two. So what I'll do this week is send out um, your number two so that you can have a look at it in advance. Um, but we will do two next week. Ah, oh, yeah. There are. It is hard, isn't it? Because a lot of exam centres aren't open. In Feb, a lot are. Give me a tick if you if you are, or go to your reactions. Give me a reaction if you are doing your exam in Feb, or give me a no if you're doing your exam some other time. Or if you can't sit your exam, give me a no. No, says Beata. Well, that's fine, you know. Yeah, oh no, Timia, I know you've been waiting for a while for yours. It's been canceled. Yeah, so there's a bit of a mixed bag there, isn't there? Um, <clears throat> some people have, some people have got some people have got others to do first. Yep, some people have had them cancelled. But we'll all get there in the end. Unprecedented isn't even the word anymore, is it? There used to be a new word. We'll get there in the end. Third time's a charm, Megan. We'll be fine. Mm -hmm. We all typically had a good week, though. Everyone all right? Everyone all right? It has been a bit crazy this week, hasn't it? It's all been a bit kind of crazy. But let's think for the next for the next while anyway, let's have a think about this. So we're going to have a look at mid audit, Ryan. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it's not even AAT. It's, it's, it's where you can sit at an exam centre, Timia. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Oh, 67 twice. That's so annoying. Third time's a charm. That's it. We can do it. You've got you've got a couple of weeks. You've got time. So this task four is one of the ones that often 
catches people out. This is the exam in its entirety. And we're going to try and have a look at the look at them. And there are some dead cert marks in there. You want to really be to be nailing that task five. And you really want to be nailing task three as well, because it's not too tricky. But task four, I thought we'd look at task four tonight because it's a real um, head scratcher. Only in as much as often people spend a long time looking at the notes when really what they should be doing is just jumping into practice, as many practice questions as they can get their hands on. Task four is, it's written and it's calculations as well. So I think that's where people get panics because you just can't guess what's going to come up. The sort of thing. Those of you who this isn't your first time, what did you see in your task four? It's tricky, isn't it? Because it can be so wide reaching. Yeah, that can be quite a big one. Limiting factors can come up. Absolutely worth revising them. Um, they can be tricky, but really it's any of that decision and control stuff that you've got going on. I have heard, heard about limiting factors, but it can be, can be lots. Right, but we are going to have a look at a task that you probably won't have seen. Exciting times. We are now looking at veggie delights. Veggie, oh yeah, Morgan. I know that feeling, Morgan. And often that's the way, isn't it? Because many practice exams you can do in the in before are good. So look, everyone's saying all different. Basically, anything can come up. I think that's the thing. It's best not to guess. We're looking at veggie delights, which is the new um, case study. I don't know if you've read it yet. Should be available to you. Um, it's great to have a new case study. Lots to think about. It means we've got new questions to have a look at, which is excellent. And I suppose it means it's, it's a good freshen up. Which one do you need to hear? This one, once I've done it, this one. Yep, I'll send this one round with it. Okay, ABC is coming up a few times. All right, I'll have a try and dig out an ABC one. All right, so once I've completed this slide, I'll do this, I'll send around this slide in the next one, no problem. Right. Veggie Delights. Veggie Delights is new for 2021. No problem. Ve new for 2021. 2021. It is. You can send the, is anyone able to find it and drop it in the case in the in the chat box? You should be able to find it. No, it's fine, honey. Don't worry. There's an awful lot going on at the moment. But let's have a look at this task we're going to do. So this, as we're often with task four, you can't really guess what's going to be until you have a look. So this task has given us lots of information about a restaurant and a pop-up event, which we're going to read in a minute. But let's just have a check of what we've got to do beforehand. So it looks like we've got to calculate some cash flow for three months and for six months. So we've got to think about calculating a cash flow. So we've got some calculations to do. Then over the page, we've got to think about what the increase in cash flow between restaurant only and restaurant plus pop-up would be. That doesn't make too much sense to me at the moment, but I'll hopefully when we get there, it will. Then asking about the required return. So again, that doesn't make too much sense, but when we get there, hopefully it will. And then typical to ask for, we've got some writing to do for five marks. So explain whether this proposal should go ahead and stating any factors. So we're going to have a work through this question together. It's a really good one to have a work through. It's probably new material for some of you. And yet, yeah, once we've annotated it, I'll send it round with this recording. Okay, so let's read through this then and see what we think. So Veggie Delights has a restaurant in the city of Southampton. Anyone from Southampton here? The restaurant has been successful and despite a high level of competition, it remains one of the most profitable restaurants. Thank you, Luke. Luke's just put the pre-release material in the chat box for you in case anyone needs it. Excellent, thank you, Luke. Um, and despite high level of competition, it remains one of the most profitable restaurants Veggie Delights has. During the summer months, the city is hosting an event and Veggie Delights are considering opening a pop-up restaurant in the marketplace. 
these are quite um, common at the moment, aren't they? Pop-up restaurants are definitely on the rise. I suppose they're a good chance to showcase your skills, a good chance to find new markets, and we're a good chance to earn revenue because what do pop-up restaurants typically, how are they typically different from a, um, the actual restaurant in terms of cost? In your experience, are they cheaper or are they more expensive? Yeah, Nikki says cheaper. They are, they are typically cheaper. Mm -hmm. Excellent, I suppose you're trying to lure people in. Restaurants, you've got lots of overheads to pay for as well. Um, where are we? It's expected that the event will allow them to operate the pop-up restaurant for three months but depending on the success of the event, it may be extended to a six month opportunity. It is expected that the pop-up restaurant will not, not reduce the number of new visitors to their current restaurant, but it is uncertain whether there may be regular customers who choose the pop-up restaurant instead. I'm gonna use that, think about that later in that written question. And that's why I always look at, look at those questions first so, so I can read the scenario being guided by what I know is, know is coming. So that might be something to consider in a bit. Says so the average spend per customer on a meal is anticipated to be less at the event as the menu range will be smaller and prices will need to be competitive with other food options. And that's often the way. As you guys have quite rightly told me, excellent. We have been provided with the following information. We have got make it slightly bigger. projected monthly demand at the event, standard average revenue per meal at pop-up restaurant, and profit margin at the pop-up restaurant. Fair enough. So that looks like the pop-up restaurant information. If I've got a profit margin, what does that mean that 42% margin is? It, what does that tell me, the word margin? What does that say to you, that word margin? You're checking your level three knowledge here. Yeah, you could think of it like that. Yeah. Nice. I like your thinking. Jess, I like your thinking. 58% would be the cost of sales. I like your thinking. Darshi says profits 42%. Yep, it's included with the total sales. If, you, if you've got something, you're all explaining it very differently, which is excellent. As long as you understood the difference between margin and markup, you're okay at that point. I always think a profit margin, I'm making 42% of my sales, right? Margin based on sales, whereas markup, we think about cost of sales. But we'll have a look at it in a minute. Oh, it's right. I knew it 40%. Okay. Um, then for a restaurant, uh, we've got a monthly demand of 1,500 meals. And we've got revenue per meal of £24 and a profit margin again of 45%. So we're going to make 45% profit on our sales. Write that note that just in case anyone needs it. And I like that person's thinking that said that that means cost of sales would be 55% of the sales. Then, as is often the way with this, we have got an initial investment to set up the pop up restaurant of 40 grand. Then we have got additional costs per month for the pop up venue of 1,500. Right, so the additional cost of 1,500. Okay. Okay, okay. So what we're told then is that the increase in cash flow must achieve the initial investment plus 30% over three months or the initial investment plus 50% over six months. So 
what are we going to use that information to answer? What do we need that to answer? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to use that to calculate the required return that we said we're going to need. We're told a required return is that the increase in cash flow must achieve the initial investment of 30 plus 30 percent over three months or the initial investment plus 50 percent over six months. So the difference between just doing the restaurant and doing the restaurant plus pop up must be over a certain value. So what we've got to do in this, I'll leave it so you can see as much as you can, is we've got to fill in the cash flows for three months and six months. All right, and in these cash flows, we'll, we'll, we ignore the initial investment for these ones. In the exam, they'd have to make that clear. But I'll tell you here, in the question we've got, we'll ignore the initial investment. We're just going to think about that when we look at the required return. But I think you would have to, it would have to be unambiguous in the exam, it would have to tell you what to do. So looking, first of all, at our sales revenue. So if we were, and we've got a table here to fill out, sales revenue, first with three months of the restaurant only, then three months of the restaurant and pop-up, six months of the restaurant only, or six months with the restaurant and pop-up? Good question, Pat. I think in this question, we're ignoring it because we're just working out the increase in cash flows. We want a comparative between the restaurant only and the restaurant plus pop-up. But I think probably, these are new questions, Pat, but I think probably we'd probably want to include it. I'm going to send them an email after this, actually, to say we probably want to include it. But we are going to consider it for a required return. Let's have a look at the sales revenue, though, make sure we can jog through them. So for three months with the restaurant only, how would I calculate my sales revenue? For three months restaurant only. How would I calculate my sales revenue? Nice. Excellent. So we've got lots of things, lots of ideas. And what you guys have all done is you have calculated the number of meals that we're going to need. Then you've times it by the cost per meal and you've times it by three months. Excellent. So to do that, we needed to work out the sales units. So how many units are we going to sell? sell? And then you use that excellently in the chat. I can see so many right answers. Well done to work out the cost per meal, or how much, well, the sales revenue per meal, I should say, how much it's costing the customer. So our sales units, um, we are making 1,050, a bit bigger than that, it's tiny, tiny writing, um, for three months. So we are going to be making 3,150 meals, if we just do the restaurant only. And you've all quite rightly told me that those 3,150 meals, we're going to charge them to the customer at 24 pounds. Oops, got a pound sign in. So it's going to be sales revenue of 75,600. Nice. Similar vein, if I'm thinking about three months where I've got the restaurant and the pop-up, well, I'm gonna have those 3,150 meals for the restaurant. How many meals am I going to make for the pop-up? Oh, in the real exam, Beata, um, or Beata, I think it's called Beata, you would just do the, um, the actual figure, but I'm just making sure I show you. No problem. Hmm. Excellent, it is. It is three months at 1,750 meals, i.e. 
5,250. I've not got enough space here. <laughs> you can turn in new questions. 5,250. All right, so all together, that is 8,400 meals. How do I work out the sales revenue though? Yes, it is Mina. How do we get there? How do we get there? So Marta, what we're doing is that we've got so take it back a step then, sales units, in a three months restaurant only, we have said that in our restaurant, we're going to do 1,500 meals and we've got three months. So it's just 1,500 times three. And then when we're looking at the restaurant and the pop-up, we're still going to do those 3,150 from the restaurant. And we're also going to make some from the pop-up Oh yeah, it's fine. That's absolutely fine. Some from the pop-up being, what was it? I remember now. 1,750 times three. So 5,250. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So what we're going to have to do, excellent. And lots of you put the right answer in here. Is those 3,150, if we're working out the sales revenue from that, 3,500, 1, 3,150 will be at 24 pounds each. And the pop-up meals will be at £20 each. So when you work that one through, what answer are you all going to give me? What's the final amount? Mm -hmm. Excellent, it is 180 600 yeah. Have one all right. Right, let's look at six months for restaurant only then. Similar situation. Now, if we just have the restaurant only. Oh, no, Bradley, not at all. You just have to show the final figure. Um, if we're looking at six months restaurant only, you've got 1,050 for six months is 6,300. And if we double the restaurant plus pop-up, we'll end up with 16,800 units. Take a second then. Check you can work out the total for the six months restaurant only and the total for the six months restaurant pop up. Don't put it in the chat, just wait a minute. Check you can work it out whilst I work it out on screen as well, just to make sure you're happy with how I get the figures I'm putting on screen. All right, so I'll put them on, but just take a second just to make sure you're happy with where they're coming from. All right. So what we've said is that for restaurants, six months uh, six months of restaurant only, we're gonna have six thousand three hundred meals, and we're gonna charge twenty four pounds a go. Whereas if we do the restaurant plus the pop up, we'll still have those restaurant meals, 
but we'll also get 10,500 mils that we can charge at 20 pounds. So that's our sales revenue. And like quite a lot of you have asked, what would you need? You just need the final figure to get the right answer. Right, so you'd need those figures there. Everybody happy with them? Hopefully. Excellent. Oh, hand up. Ooh, what's your hand up? Someone's raised their hand. Go on, tell me. You can always send me, so in Zoom, you can in Zoom, you can always send a chat to, a chat message to everybody, or you can just send a private message. Either is good. If you have a question, it's all good. Oh, sorry if I missed it. Hanny says it's been up for ages. Whoever raised their hand, just let me know what you need. Oh, it's you, Mina. Was it when you were asking for asking before? Well, this is new, these participant things. It's quite clever. The funniest thing this week has been watching my um so my nine-year-old and seven-year-old on, on team meets with their school because they've had to disable the chat this week. Um, they've had to disable, has it been since Tuesday, has it, honey? They've had to disable the chat this week because all the seven-year-olds and nine-year-olds just keep talking at each other the whole way through. <laughs> so that's been quite funny. Um, impossible when they keep talking. Is that the same for you, Emma? They just keep giving each other all emojis and like, there's rainbows all over the screen and there's like gifs going up and there's, every time anyone speaks they give each other like um, lots of reactions it's quite funny well yeah but there's not so much learning going on honey it's quite funny <laughs> the poor teachers got I know this is it the poor teachers got 30 of them just sending each other gifs all over the place <laughs> um. Drawing on the screen, are they using Zoom? That's quite bad, because you can. Oh, no, because you can disable that, but the teacher can't work it out. Oh, poor teacher. <laughs> oh, dear. My, our school are using um, Teams, which doesn't seem to have the draw on the screen functionality. Oh, uh, right. Well, yeah. It's, it's new to it. I mean, we, we're lucky because we've been do, teaching virtually since um, March. But it's not, it's not, it's a baptism of fire, that's for sure. Okay, so if we're all happy with the sales revenue, I think we all are, let's have a look at cost of sales. So the cost of meal production. So we are going to have to work out the cost of sales for both the Southampton restaurant and the pop-up restaurant. And actually, annoyingly, they've given us different profit margins for each one. So that smart cookie earlier, who said that if a profit, profit margin on a pop-up restaurant is 42%, it means that the cost of sales is going to be 58% of the revenue. That's going to be a really useful little way of thinking about it. Whereas for our cost of sales profit margin 45%, our, our, our cost of sales here is going to be 55% of the revenue. In terms of rounding, so Alison uh, has just asked about rounding. Uh, rounding is a really um, good questionality exam because you do end up with the wrong answer if you don't follow the instructions. So what you should do if it's money is do it, like you say, to the nearest penny. Absolutely. Do it as you would in real life. I think here it rounds. I think here we haven't got any rounding problems. So if money do it to the nearest pound, uh, nearest penny, I should say, as you would in real life. But actually, when you get to the ratios, for example, they will ask, they will tell you to how many decimal places and they will make it clear in the questions. So it's a really important thing to look out for you on your exam because you could very easily know the answer to something and just lose marks because of your rounding, which would be really, really annoying. All right, so follow that question for that one. So we are going to have to work out. We know that for Southampton, we're going to have to do 58% of the revenue and the pop-up restaurant is going to be 55% of the revenue. All right. So annoyingly, because I've got the individual figures, we'll have to work it out again. 
but you know, why not? Keep up, give our brains another whirl this time of right of night. Has everyone had a good day? Hopefully. Right, so let's have a look then. So for this first one, we only have to, we have to do fifty eight percent of seventy five thousand. So we do times zero point five eight which might sound obvious to lots of you, but plenty of people in my classes have struggled with that in the past. So I know always to point it out. Um, so our cost of sales for that one is 43,848. Excellent, Timmy. Excellent, Rebecca. Straight on there. Yeah, so the pop-up restaurant has... Ooh. What's going on? Yeah, I think you're right. Have I got the wrong way around? Probably. Be late in the day for me as well now. Hmm? Do, 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 do. Thank you for pointing that out. Excellent. So our pop-up restaurant. Oh, we've got the wrong way around. There may be an error in these questions. I think there's an, th these are, these are fresh, hot off the press, these questions, so we're, we're trying them out, but I think there might be an error in these questions, so we're going to go this way. Yes. Let me grab my calculator, because I think there might be an error in these way around, but let's keep going with it. So, let me rub this out. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do for the purpose of getting this question the way it, where it'll end up needing to be, I'm going to change them around up here. Apologies for this. These are hot off the press. So the profit margin on the pop-up restaurant, we're going to call that one 45%, just for the purpose of the figures working out the way that we're going to need to work out. And the profit margin on the Southampton restaurant, we're going to call that one 42%. All right. Apologies for that. What a drama are these questions tonight? All I've done is I've just switched them around because what I don't want to do is change all the numbers and then end up getting to the next to B and C and it all going wrong. But after this, I'm going to send them an email to point out that I think whoever's done these questions has just got them the wrong way around. So with our Southampton restaurant, we're assuming that there's a 58% cost of sales and a pop-up restaurant is going to be a 55% cost of sales. So when we work that through, we end up with 43,848. And then 43,848. For the Southampton restaurant and the pop-up restaurant, we end up with 57. 750. When we have a look at the six months only, we end up with cost of sales of 87,696, being 58% of that sales revenue. And when we work through the next one, we end up with Cost of sales of 87,696 for the restaurant and 115,500 for the pop-up restaurant. Yeah, those, those are the sort of mistakes that absolutely easily happen as we have demonstrated quite carefully, quite cleverly here tonight. <laughs> Definitely, they're really easy to, easy to happen. And actually, there's only so much you can do realistically if you're making those in the exams. You can you can you can be aware of them, but it's not worth worrying about them. 
other costs we've got to work out before we get to our net cash inflow are these additional costs for the event. So we are told up here again that additional costs for per month for the pop-up venue, i.e. for additional staff, is 1,500 per month. So for the three months, we'll end up with costs of 4,500. And for the six months, we'll end up with additional costs or so additional staff costs of 9,000. Yeah, that use, as Timmy says, using that additional paper is very, very useful. Should in your exam have some paper next to you. You can't take it in, you should be given it in your exam. So to work out my net cash inflow, like I say, ignoring that initial investment, so I've got a couple of things just to drop down to the, drop down to the production team, but we are going to end up with a net cash inflow of 75,600, take away the cost of sales of 43,848. And the first, if we do it for three months restaurant only, our ca net cash inflow is 31,752. Whereas if we do three months restaurant and pop up, we will end up once we do 180,000, excellent Rebecca, 180,000 less those red figures, we're going to end up with 74,502. Right. So what's the difference then between doing three months and do a restaurant only and three months restaurant plus top a uh, pop up? What's that difference? It's going to be the important figure, I suppose, isn't it? What's the difference between the two? Yeah, what's the difference? It is, guys, it is. It is 42, 500. Yeah, 42, 750. You are ha absolutely right. And that's going to come into play when we think about that required return. So the difference, if we're over, over three months, the difference of having a pop-up or not is if we have a pop-up, we're going to make 42 extra grand. If we don't have a pop-up, we're going to make 31 grand. If we do, we're going to make 74. So it comes to the question, is it worth it? So given the initial investment of 40 grand, Really, we've only made £2,000, haven't we? As Marta quite rightly points out. Right, but we're going to use that when we come to that required return in part C. Yeah, absolutely, Hanny. Exposure and marketing come, are going to come in useful when we come to part D. Doing the same exercise for six months then, what's the difference over six, uh, when we look at it over six months? For six months, if we just have the restaurant, we've got 63,504. Whereas if we have the pop-up as well, we actually make 149,004 pounds. So that's a bigger difference. Over six months, the difference between having a pop-up and not is actually, 85,500. That's a bigger difference. That starts to feel like actually, if you had it for six months, that initial investment, as you can tell, 40 grand on 80 grand, well, you're doubling your money, aren't you? You're making it absolutely, Alice, you're making a much bigger profit. All right. So, without looking at the numbers, you'd think, well, if we're going to do it, we need to do it for a while. We'll check it against this required return in a minute. But actually, just looking at it in a common sense point of view, if I'm going to put 40 grand in, I'm not going to put 40 grand in to make two. I mean, I don't have 40 grand. I mentioned if you did, just throw around. But I'm not going to do it to make two grand, but I might do it to make 45. All right? So that's, a, that's something to consider when we get to that last written part. Oh, that's useful. We've just answered part B. Have a look. Everyone got the figures they need? Throw me a thumbs up or something if you've got the figures you need. But like I said, like Tim has asked, I'm going to send you this page anyway. 
Anyone got the figures they need? Nice. Oh, no, Sathani. Okay, cool. I'll wait a minute. Okay, right. So for part, I will send you this, guys. If anyone still needs anything else, I will send you this page. For part B then, we've already answered this question luckily. We've, they asked us, what is the increase in cash flow between restaurant only and restaurant plus pop-up at the event? So over three months, we found it to be oh, 42,750. And over six months, we found it to be 85,500. So that's the increase in cash flow between having, uh, having a restaurant only and restaurant plus pop up over those months. And for C, we've got to work out what the required return is. So for the sake of flipping around all the time, I'll write down what we had. So over three months, we needed to make that 40 grand plus 30% to make it viable. And over six months, we needed to make that 40 grand plus 50% to make it viable. So you have a tap on your calculators then, see if you can work out how much we needed. Excellent, Ryan. Yep, yeah, have a tap, make sure you can do it. But actually, the required, we've got a bit more space now on this page, it's what I like, a bit of space. Required return, <clears throat> over three months we needed 40 grand plus 30%. Easiest way to do that is times it by 1.3, giving us 52,000. And again, don't underestimate that that sort of thing can really affect people, actually. I know you guys at the end of your AAT, so you've probably picked up all those sort of tricks. But just in case you have just jumped into level four, just don't get caught out by those sort of basic mathematical things. Right, so I know that often it's one of those ones where actually people aren't happy to ask those simpler questions. Whereas over six months, we need 40 grand plus 50%, so times 1.5 which is 60,000. <clears> so what do you think? Are, should we do it or should we not do it? I know it's a very a big question to ask, but do you think we should do it or should we not? What do you think? You can put it in the chat or give me a tick or give me a cross. Tick for yes, we should do it. Cross for no, we should not. Interesting, a mix of opinions here. So give me a tick if you think we should go ahead and a cross for no. Excellent. So what I think is really important is that some of you have said, no, we shouldn't do it. Some of you have said yes for six months. So actually, a lot of us would have cost ourselves mark, well, we haven't done D yet, but a really useful piece of exam technique when we get to D, where we're going to be asked to explain whether we should go ahead or not, is that you've all implied that we shouldn't do it for three months. And I think actually, a lot of people would lose marks at that point, because actually there's, there's marks there for saying, look, over three months, we're not going to make the required return. Right, over three months, the increase in cash flow isn't big enough to make that required return because the increase in cash flow of 42,000 is less than the required return of 52. So I think it's really useful when we're looking at D to start with that fact that over three months, we're not going to make the required return. And then as you guys have shown by the difference in opinion, there's definitely a discussion to be had over six months. Is it worth it or is it not? 
So I think we'll have a look at D now, but it's really useful to point that out to you. It absolutely is worth using your calculations in D, and that's why I didn't want to muck around with my calculations earlier when there was a problem with the question, Ryan, because um, I think so. I think you don't want to lose marks. I think if you go straight for the big answer, you're going to lose marks because this hasn't taken us as long as you'd have in the exam. So you want to use the time you've got at that point, Alison. Question for D, though, is explain whether the proposal should go ahead mm -hmm. and state any factors, financial and non-financial, to consider when making this decision. Right, so this explain verb, verb is going to be really useful. And I think we're going to start with the financial factors because they make the most sense. And that's what the that's where we're typically, that's where we're at so far, isn't it? So I think it'd be really useful um, to start your answer by saying, look, over three months, the required return is not met. Uh, the proposal should not go ahead. Because if you jump straight to the six, month, six months, yeah, Megan, I'm different every week. Nope, oh, got my phone. And um, if you go straight for six months, you're going to lose that mark, that mark that I think is a very, I think all of us implied that we knew just by going straight for the, our, our answer. Um, then, the fact that over a six month period. So why did some of you say no? Because I don't necessarily disagree with you. So six months, the required return is met. Why were you, some of you going for no over those six months? Some of you did go for no. Why do you think we should not do it? There's a little trick in the question. That's absolutely fine. The person has just messaged me. I'll send out the recording so you'll get the recording anyway. So it's absolutely fine. Don't worry. Sorry to hear that, but not a problem on my end. Yes, absolutely. It's a bit mean, isn't it? Because the question is on, isn't on the page. But actually, what they said is, this is where this is going to be really important to keep reading that scenario. It is expected that the event will allow them to operate the pop-up for three months, but depending on the success, it may be extended to a six-month opportunity. So if we say yes to six months, we've got to go for three months. We put all our eggs in that basket. So it's quite a, a toss up whether, we, whether we're going to go for it or not. So over six months, the required rate of return is met, but it may be uncertain as to whether we should do it. So actually, there's a lot of uncertainty there. So I think you'd probably want to go for, well, it depends whether the investors are risk averse or risk loving. It's probably too uncertain. It'd probably need more information. So that's where, oh, lots of messages. Yeah, exactly. Good, good spot, those of you, because that's unfair. That's mean to me because you haven't got it on your screen, but it shows some of you. You've got to think these scenarios through, which is good. Um, yeah, absolutely, Elizabeth. All these things are based on assumptions. All right. So, actually, it, there is a bit of a risk this one. It's not a dead set. No problem, DT. Um, Yep, yeah, no problem, Marta. Um, yeah, that's a good point, though, Alison. As long as you make some profit in three months, you should go ahead. But it's quite close to the wire. It is close to the wire. I know the feeling, Sarah. Don't worry, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, so we could say that three months is more secure to get the required return. I think any sort of discussion around this will earn you a, a two marks here. Yeah. But I think it's useful to talk about the non-financial factors. Time is running away with us, as always. 
what sort of non-financial factors would you consider when you're going to make this decision about whether to go ahead or not? What sort of things would you be wanting to think about? Excellent. So hopefully I'll drop in. Oh, blimey. Marius, I don't know if we get, I don't, uh, do you know what? That's a very pertinent point, obviously. But I think in your, in your assessment, I think you just avoid, avoid it. All right, because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise everything will be a no, won't it? Um, Ryan says, reputation for the business using a pop-up. Yeah, and it could go either way, couldn't it? Reputational impact. It depends if it's any good or not. I know Gordon Ramsay didn't have much success with his um, branches going growing culture. A lot of them shut down and actually it undermined his brand. So it really all depends on the reputational impact, which can go either way. All you're doing is stating a factor, financial and non-financial, to consider. So you don't have to necessarily um, say either way. You just have to say what you might think about. Weather, seasonal. Yeah, there was absolutely that. Um, at the moment in Chelmsford, where I am, there was an um, ice rink. But this year they didn't put it up. I think probably with COVID, like Marius says. But actually other years it's been rained off. Absolutely. Demand. Yes. Demand and absolutely the robustness. The robustness of the market research. Yeah. Has this market research and this these assumptions, are these assumptions valid or not? Are they robust? Absolutely. Oh, 13 new messages. Excellently. Customer satisfaction. Absolutely. So whether it improves the customer experience. So actually, that's a very good point, actually, because social media has a big part to play in this. So it's a bit, of, a bit in terms of that reputational impact. If there was a big social media buzz, that might mean even if we didn't think it had a direct impact and we're getting the money straight away, it might roll into a bigger thing. Extra employment, absolutely, which again could go either way. It's going to cost us money, but actually that's a very positive impact, impact on the local economy. Yeah. Well, that would be good. Location. Yeah, the location is an important thing to think about, isn't it? Is it a good location or is it somewhere which no one's ever going to go to? Absolutely. Innovation and growth. Great, Olga. Absolutely. It's great innovation and it's very good for growth. So actually, is that going to promote our company in a different way? All these are excellent factors that we would consider. Absolutely. 18 new messages. Excellent. Reputation in fact, good advertising. Yeah. So you've got the idea with this, which is excellent. And it seems like you've definitely Good enough. It's a shame we can't do it as a team because it'd be excellent. Ah, oh, great, Peter. Peter says more management time will be dedicated to it. Yeah, so you've lost management time because you're using it on this. That's a really good point. Competition in the air. I'm going to run out of space soon, guys. Competition. Yep. Yeah, how much competition is there? Sometimes we have these agglomeration economies, actually, where things tend to group together. So you have things like hairdressers all together and you have estate agents all together. Now, they're called agglomeration economies, but that means that actually, if you, want, if, you're, if you happen to be in one place, you're going to actually look somewhere else and see, oh, I might go there next time. And if you know you go to a certain side of town to eat, it might be a good thing to have lots of people there in one of these agglomeration economies. They're quite useful. Um, management time, absolutely. Staff and management time, that's good. That idea of there being an opportunity cost where management um, could be doing something else. Yeah, I'll write down agglomeration economies. You might not have heard of them before. Okay, that's, don't worry, you haven't missed that term. It's not an economic term. Uh, it's not an accountancy term, it's an economic term. Right, so... Location timings. We're going to come to your question in a minute, Be uh, Beata. It's a good question. How are you going to conclude all of this? Location, timing and limits. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Let, that's a great idea, Lisa. Think about when we're going to break even. We might do a bit of break even analysis and work out, actually, 
if I don't worry about the required return. Good point, Alison. So Alison's hit the nail on the head with this, actually. Inflation, there's so many great answers. Well done, everybody. Alison's hit the nail on the head. Um, do you bullet point them or do you explain them? What you're going to need for five marks is five well, well reasoned, well explained points. So you've given me tons of ideas, many more than you would need. But actually, in your exam, you're going to need five well reasoned points. So you're going to want to explain the financials, the two at the top. And you're going to want maybe three of these. And then we're going to come to a conclusion at the end. And you're going to need a conclusion. And that's going to be your conclusion about whether we should go ahead or not. And that's where actually, once you've worked, once you've got through all of this, you're going to need to practice writing out an, a, a reason, writing it out. So I think you probably, ooh, it's real uncertain whether you should go ahead. I know that the answer to this goes with don't go ahead because of that six month uncertainty. Um, I think, yeah, I think probably don't going ahead is probably the better answer. You might necessarily not lose marks for going ahead. Yeah, absolutely. You can argue your answer. Absolutely. I think as well, what you're, what you're looking to do, if you go back to the, uh, to the question is it, where you're saying explain whether the proposal should go ahead that's telling me that I need to come to that conclusion should it go ahead I've got to make a decision whether it should go ahead or not and my decision my decision would be it shouldn't based on the fact that um, over three months it's definitely not met and over six months it's met but it's very uncertain whether we'll get there and then I'd probably pick up on maybe reputational impact and lost management time were probably my favourite points there. I liked the idea of extra employment being a positive impact on the local economy. I liked that one as well. But there were plenty of other things you could consider. Um, but I think at that point, you've got to really practice writing it out just to give yourself a feel for writing it, because you don't want the first time to write, you write this stuff to be in your real exam. If Megan says, if your answer isn't ideal, but well argued, is this okay? It absolutely is. You might end up with maybe four out of five because you've missed the point about it being uncertain over six months, but you're not gonna end up with less than that. It's much more important that your answer is well reasoned rather than that it's just correct. Right. Okay, right, I'm gonna save these pages so I send them to you tomorrow. So tomorrow, I'm gonna to send you a recording and these two pages, and I'm gonna have a look at what we're doing next week. But you've said task two, haven't you? Which I think makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Two and six, yeah, two and six are quite good ones, aren't they? They're often good ones to do. All right, I'm going to stop the recording now, now guys. But if any, I hope you all have an excellent week. And I will see you all next week. ABC, a lot of people are saying ABC. ABC, yes, ABC.